In this video, we're going to show you four different ways to connect your audio mixer to a headphone amplifier or a splitter. Everything that you see in this video will work even if your headphone amp is not a splitter, if it's a single channel headphone amp. The same techniques and the same cables and everything that you see in this video will work for you as well. Now there's three different reasons that we typically find that people want to do this. The first is they want to split the headphone output four ways. If they're recording a podcast, their band is running an in-ear monitor setup or something like that, you just need more output so everybody can hear what they want. They want to set their own volume. The second reason that we see all the time is that you just need more volume. Some audio mixers don't have really good headphone amplifiers built into them, so you may need to just reamp it to get the volume that you need if you have a hard to power set of headphones. The third reason that we see is if you have a high-end tube preamp or something like that. It comes with a feature set that you're looking for or it comes with coloration or tone or something that you find that you need with your headphones. Everything that you see in this video will work for you as well. Now in this video we are using the Mackie ProFX 10V3 audio mixer with a Mackie HM4 amplifier splitter. This is a pretty simple device. It's quite inexpensive for what it is and for what you get for it. But it comes with one input and it'll split that input for ways it works exactly as you would expect where everybody gets their own volume control and they can set the volume as they need. Now if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video as we go through the four different techniques to connect these two devices, please do check out the links down in the description where you can find current up-to-date pricing from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible if you're looking to buy anything in this video. Now before we get started, before we get into the mechanics of connecting this audio mixer to the headphone amplifier, we got to cover two pieces of theory just to make sure that we're all talking about the same things. The first piece of theory that we need to cover is the difference between a balanced and an unbalanced quarter inch cable. Here I have two different connectors in front of me. The first is an unbalanced connector. It has a tip and a sleeve. It's also known as a TS cable or an instrument cable. This cable is really meant for connecting guitars to amplifiers with a cable somewhere around 15 to 20 feet, but not really any longer than that. That's really what this cable is designed to do. It can carry an unbalanced mono signal. The second cable and connector here is a balanced quarter inch cable. You can see it has three parts. It has the tip, the ring, and the sleeve, so it's also called a TRS cable or tip ring sleeve cable or a balanced quarter inch cable. This cable will work for two different purposes. It can carry an unbalanced stereo signal, so if you're using headphones for example and you need the left, the right, and a ground for a distance of up to 15 feet, this cable would work really well for that. It can also carry a balanced mono signal. How that works is it basically sends two versions of the signal with the second version would be phase inverted and when it gets to its destination it gets reflipped so the polarity is synced and then it cancels out the noise on the cable. That's a really rough crash course on how balanced cables work but all you need to know is it can carry an unbalanced stereo signal or a balanced mono signal and those are very different but you can use the same cable for both. Okay, so the first way that we're going to try to connect the audio mixer to the headphone amp is by using a balanced quarter inch cable to connect the two from the headphone jack of the audio mixer into the input on the headphone amplifier. So you can see here we're using a balanced cable. This is a tip ring sleeve, so it's known as a TRS cable as well. We're going to connect it to the headphone output of the audio mixer. We're going to connect the other end to the input of the amplifier splitter. Let's get put my headphones on. Now the first thing that I noticed, the volume is already up on these, is that it's a nice stereo signal. If I pan to the right, it goes to my right ear. If I pan to the left, it goes to my left ear. So this is working exactly how I expect and how I want headphones to work with a connection like this. Next we need to talk about how we're going to set the volume on this. Generally, the headphone amps that are built into an audio mixer 
are not always the highest quality. You may notice that there is some noise or hissing or white noise or something like that coming from the headphone amplifier on a mixer. And that's essentially because they didn't spend all their engineering or development tokens on that side of the audio mixer. Generally, all the effort goes to the mic preamps that are in an audio mixer, and the headphone amp is generally a pretty low priority because it's really just used for reference. But it is worth noting that if you do hear hiss in your headphones, that's not necessarily making its way to the recording. So I always recommend that you do a test recording, listen to the noise on your computer and make sure that it is low noise and the hiss is just superficial. It's just in your headphones coming from the headphone amp. Now, a good technique is I generally don't turn up the volume on the headphone amp on the audio mixer past 50%. Once you go past 50% on most audio mixers that I have here in the studio and that I've used out in the wild, that's when you really start to get noise and hiss. So I try to avoid that if possible. So I'll set that to 50% and then I'll play with the headphone volume from here on the headphone amplifier splitter that I'm using. If I'm doing this, like I said, some brands are different. You may want to experiment to find the least amount of noise and hiss in your headphones. There's not a lot of noise and hiss and you do acclimate to it fairly quickly, but I would say just don't turn up the main headphone, the first headphone output on your audio mixer past 50% if you want as little hiss as possible. But this technique is very straightforward. One cable, really easy to do. You get stereo sound. You can plug four inputs into this, or if you're using a single channel headphone amp, it'll work just fine for you as well. Now, the second way that you may want to be trying to do this is to use the aux output. On this audio mixer, we're using the effects send as an aux output. So if we connect that with this TRS or balanced quarter inch cable, I notice a couple things when I first listen to this. It's a mono signal. Now, I plugged into it there. If I pan it left, it doesn't change. If I pan it right, it doesn't change. So that's not really what you want, just to hear everything out of one ear. The benefits of doing it this way are that you can set a custom mix. So if you're a musician or something, or if you're podcasting, and you like having one ear off anyway then this might work for you because you don't use your second ear and you get the ability to set a custom mix for your headphone with the headphone amplifier splitter. But this will only give you one output. And that's because this is trying to send a balanced mono signal. And the long story is, or the short story is that the headphone amp doesn't know how to reinvert that second phase of a mono signal to get it to the right ear. So it basically just ignores it and you get one signal in your headphones. So this isn't super effective if you need stereo sound, but it does work if you just need one ear and if you're just trying to get along with it. But I don't really recommend this method. Next, let's try using the control room outputs. Or on some audio mixers, this is called a monitor output meant for desk monitors. So we're going to plug into here, and I notice the same thing. This right output is trying to send a balanced right output to a set of desk monitors. So this really is the wrong cable for it at this point. I'm going to use this other cable that I have here, and it'll give us a better stereo signal. So I'm going to get rid of this TRS cable. And for this, I'm going to use what's known as an insert cable. Now, an insert cable here has two TS, or unbalanced mono connectors, and it merges to a TRS connector that'll give us unbalanced stereo. So the red is always going to the right, and black is always left. So we can plug these into the left and right outputs. Red is right, left is black. And then we can plug this stereo cable into our headphone amp. And now I get stereo sound again out of my headphones. If I pan to the right, it goes to the right. If I go to the left, it goes to the left. So this works really well. On some audio mixers, it's actually better to come out this way because you do get more features when you're using desk monitors. Sometimes there's buttons or modes that allow certain soft patching or hard patching on your audio mixer to better control the mix for your headphones. So this could be an effective solution for you if the headphone jack isn't giving you what you need. Now, on this audio mixer, I am lucky enough to have a separate volume control for this output. That's not always the case either. Sometimes you get one volume knob that controls this and the headphone output at the same time. But if you want to split 
a signal eight ways, you can use this output to one headphone splitter, use the headphone jack output to another headphone splitter. In terms of quality and usability, I find this just about as good or unnoticeable in difference compared to the headphone output that we tried the first way around. Now the last and fourth way that I'm going to show you is using the main stereo outputs on the audio mixer. So again, we're going to use the same cable, same method, we're just using a different output, and this gives us the same result as the previous method where we get stereo sound. If I pan to the right, it goes to the right ear. If I pan to the left, it goes to my left ear. So it works really well. The downside of this method is that your volume level is linked with your XLR outputs as well. So maybe you don't always have independent control over this feed that goes to your headphones, but you do get volume control on the headphone amplifier splitter itself. So you might be able to make it work by adjusting the volume just there and not m messing with the main level or the main stereo output level of your audio mixer. So out of all four of these ways, I prefer just using the headphone jack to the headphone amplifier splitter with a balanced quarter inch cable. That's the most straightforward to me. But if you do have different things going on on your audio mixer, if your audio mixer has a certain set of features that you really need for your headphone output, then I would consider the control room or monitor outputs or the stereo outputs methods three and four that we showed you. But I really don't think that sending an aux send because it's a balanced mono output is really effective for headphones. It's more meant for a stage monitor or a powered speaker or something like that. It's not really meant for a stereo headphone feed. I hope this video is helpful. If you have any questions about anything that we've showed you in this video, please do ask a question down in the comment section below. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you've seen in this video or trying to find the right cables to make this work for you, we do have links down in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. <laughs>